بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه من وله أما بعد فعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال تبارك الله تعالى كما ورد في سورة البقرة مثل الذين ينفقون أموالهم في سبيل الله كمثل حبة أنبتت سبع سنابل في كل سنبلة مئة حبة والله يضاعف لمن يشاء والله واسع عليم وقال تبارك الله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تمتن إلا ما أنتم مسلمون رب شرح لي صدري ويسل لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لسان يفقه قولي وجعل لي وزير من أهلي آمين يا رب العالمين So Alhamdulillah, Ramadan is the month of forgiveness, Ramadan is the month of Quran, and Ramadan is the month for fundraisers also. <laughs> uh, there are so many, or almost all the Islamic organizations, whether they are masjid or they are relief organizations, may Allah bless them all, they will going to knock your doors because Ramadan is the time and most of the people take out their zakat and sadaqat, and that's where they were going to say, come and help us, we are, doing, we are serving the ummah through your money. I thought this would be a best time to just tell you what Quran have to say about the etiquettes of giving charity. Uh, I always wanted to speak about this passage from Surah Al-Baqarah. Um, although we cannot speak about the entire passage because it's around three pages. It's the pinnacle. It's the height. It's the peak of the Quran giving us etiquettes about how to give charity. What is the reward? What will destroy your charity? What should be the quality of the charity? Whether you should announce or you should give it in private? Whatever the etiquettes are, it's mentioned in the, these two, three pages at the ending of Suratul Baqarah. So I thought this is the best time because all of us will be taking out our uh, charity and our donation. So I thought, inshallah, we're going to give two or three ayat from this passage. Just to tell you what's going on in Suratul Baqarah before we can understand this so that our understanding will be based on proper comprehension. Um, that in the end of Surah Al-Baqarah where this ayah is, where these ayat are, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if you have excess money, extra money, you can either do either of these three things. Either you can have the best use of that excess money by giving charity in the view of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what is mentioned here. Or you can use that money in a haram way, the worst possible way, to get more money from an interest, from a riba, from a usury, which is haram. Or a permissible use, so best use charity, worst use interest, or a permissible use, that is business transaction. So Ayatul Dain is there. Now within that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, even if you see the context, these ayat were revealed around the time of Badr. So it will give you the idea of the context, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking Muslims to donate. There are many different words used in the Quran and Sunnah for donation and charity. I just want to give you those two broad categories why Allah had used donation and charity for what reason. There are many different words. There is zakat, there is sadaqah, there is itai mal, there is qard hasana, beautiful loan, um, there is infaq, giving charity or donation. But out of all these different words, if you analyze, there are only two broad categories Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is asking you to take care. One, taking care of the less fortunate people the needy, the poor, the orphan. Our Islam really asks us, encourages us to take care of that. So Islam asks us to take care of the less fortunate people. But then there is a second category which we might not understand because the liberal mindset might not like this idea. So first is taking care of poor and needy. Allah uses words for that. The second is taking care of Islam itself. What's the point of taking care of the orphans when Islam is an orphan? <laughs> you don't like this idea, but it is. You have to take care of the religion also. So building the institutions, giving da'wah, education, all these things, building masajid, they were going to come in this category. And interestingly, whenever Allah used the word infaq or qard hasana, beautiful loan or charity that is only for building institutions to protect uh, the islam for helping the poor and needy there are different words so these ayat which i will recite which is most often recited in our fundraisers this is revealed for this reason just remember this now without any further delay let's just start allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says first about the reward of giving charity and donation 
Allah says, مَثَلُ الَّذِينَ يُنْفَقُونَ أَمْوَالَهُمْ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ Those people, the example of those people who give charity, who give donation for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala كَمَ سَلِي حَبَّ أَنْبَتَتْ سَبَعَ سَنَابِلْ فِي كُلِّ مِئَةِ فِي كُلِّ فِي كُلِّ سُمْبُلَةِ مِئَةُ حَبَّ Their example is like the example of a seed that seed will grow after some time into seven additional grain and then each grain will result in seven additional seed. So in a simple language, from this complex calculation, basically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, your one dollar will going to be considered as 700. One seed resulting into seven grain, seven grain resulting into, each grain will result in additional 100 seed. Or Allah says, Wallahu yudha'afu man yasha. Or Allah will multiply this even more than that. I was thinking, when I was exposed to this ayah for the first time, when I was, I'm still a student of tafsir, but when I started learning tafsir, the first time I asked this question, I said, why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, instead of saying in a simple language, your one dirham, your one dinar, your one dollar, is going to result in $700, I was going to consider that as $700. Allah would have given a simple formula. Well, Allah would have selected this, seed and then after some time seven grain and then each grain will result into hundred uh, additional seed why this mathematical example complex formula and i got the answer from tafsir al-qurtubi subhanallah he says this is exactly how our donation works this is exactly how our charity donation works he says Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving an example. The person who gives donation is like the person who is a farmer. Subhanallah. When a farmer puts the seed in the ground, can he see the growth of that seed? He cannot see the growth because it's happening in the ground. That seed will grow into grains. That grains will take out additional seeds. You cannot see the growth. The farmer only have to wait for the year end to get the big paycheck. Yes, he have to protect that land, that piece of land from the insects, from the weather, from the snow, from the rain. But you cannot see the growth inside, isn't it? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you give few dollars, let's say if you will give inshallah tomorrow's our fundraiser or there are many other organizations having fundraiser. If you take care of some of the operational expenses of that institution, you know what will happen? Maybe, maybe someone will going to accept Islam. Every other Friday we have brothers and sisters taking shahada. Maybe someone will accept Islam. Maybe they will receive the reward gift or they will come in the classes because you portion of your money taking care of that operational expenses of the masjid. And then they will going to marry that Muslim or reward sister from that marriage. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give them a son or daughter and they will going to go to Islamic school. And then after 20 years, that kid will become a scholar he will teach in some other community. Guess what? Who will going to get the portion of reward from all that? You, because you took care of that expenses to start with. But it took 20 years, right? <laughs> so you don't see the immediate growth. When you give donation and charity, especially in these kinds of things. Because Islam doesn't believe in fleshy works. Islam believes in stable, bringing stability. When you entrust, when you donate in these kinds of causes, it will take some time before you get that big paycheck. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, is using this example, subhanAllah. Um, one of the questions also I had about this ayah, that Allah says you will get the reward 700 times. Is it the reward in Akhirah? Or is this the reward in Dunya? And actually I was surprised that some Mufassir said that scholars do say this, that you will get the reward in Akhirah, that's for sure if you if your intention was to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But you will also get the reward in dunya that Allah will bless your wealth. Allah will multiply your wealth. And I was surprised to read that some scholars say that this ayah, this ayah was revealed because of Abdurrahman ibn Awf radiallahu an. And some scholars say it was Usman ibn Affan radiallahu an. When Abdurrahman ibn Awf at the time of Tabuk, the battle, he got 4,000 camels and he donated. How many? 4,000. If you just take out Google, not right now, after, 
a average US cost of the lowest possible cost for a single camel is 5,000 US dollar. So 4,000 camel into 5,000, 20 million. Six zeros after 20. You in US dollars in today's work. Abdurrahman ibn Auf and Omar ibn al-Khattab is asking, why are you doing this? And he says, I have 8,000 camels out of which 4,000 I'm giving it for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa saw this, you know what Rasulullah said? Rasulullah says, Barakallahu laka fima amsakta wa fima atayt. That may Allah bless Abdurrahman's wealth for what he has left for his family, those 4,000 camels, and may Allah bless your wealth for whatever you're donating. And there were, therefore, some scholars believe that even in this dunya, whatever you donate, Allah will bless your remaining money so that you will grow in numbers. And there are many other ahadiths where Rasulullah Sassan promised. He says, Ma malin min Your wealth won't reduce by giving charity. Allah will give barakah in the remaining wealth. I don't want to share these stories. There are so many stories. I know each and everyone have these stories. So we have to be humble about telling these stories also. But one brother I know, not from this community, so don't start looking at each other. One brother in 2010 or 2011, he was struggling for a job after his master's, after his undergrad, struggling for a job. I spoke with him two weeks ago and he told me he was asking for some spiritual financial advice. He told me when I asked his numbers, he says he's earning 0.1 million dollar a month <laughs> through business. I said, you need to tell me the formula. What did you do? Means you were asking me to make dua for you that you find a job 10 years ago. What did you do all of a sudden? And this is after expenses and all those things. That's profit. And he was, subhanAllah, he was so humble. He said straight, there is only one formula. I said, what is that formula? He did not say, oh, you need to read the pattern of the market and all those things. No, 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 not those catchy phrases. He's very smart in finances that you can tell clearly, but he says from 2011, from the time I was struggling, whatever money I had until today, I made a promise to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever profit I will get in a month, I will take 10% out for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And now he have a separate employee, separate employee, just for they taking care of that 10%. <laughs> and uqsimu billah, this is true story. <laughs> Allah is going to do this. Sometimes we need to trust Allah. We test Allah a lot. Okay, let me put donation, donation box $10. Imam Asif, it didn't become $70. <laughs> because we are testing Allah. Just trust Allah. If not in numbers, your expenses will be reduced in the remaining wealth. Somehow you will be blessed in your wealth. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us proper understanding. Ameen, Ya Rabbi. The second thing, subhanAllah, time is running out, but um, second thing, I just got the message, my iPad is connected through the internet, so my messages are coming here. One of our beloved brother, brother Zakir Ali, his mother passed away. Inna lillahi wa inna May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive her sins, elevate her status to Jannah and get us all in the company of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And may Allah forgive all the brothers and sisters who have passed away in our community. Ameen, Ya Rabb. So we'll announce the janaza detail and funeral announcement later, inshallah. Second, second point, after this ayah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says what you need to do, what are prerequisites of donation. So Allah just mentioned about the reward. Now Allah is telling about the prerequisites. And I will end with these two points, inshallah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, not all the people were going to get the 700 times reward. You need to do something. There are prerequisites. Or even actually after you do this, you need to take care of something. Allah says, These two things. I want you all who are donating money. Remember these two words. Allah says, those who give money for the sake of Allah. And then they do not follow their donation. They do not follow their charity with constant reminders about their generosity or hurtful words. Then they will get the reward. Constant reminders. Al-man wal azal. Manna means constantly reminding someone. You remember I helped you? You need more help? 
and al other hurtful words you are hurting someone's feeling after donating him or after donating to a cause if you do this you won't have any portion you won't have any portion of the reward you know many a times subhanallah in our community uh, you will see this you'll see this at the individual level and at the collective level at the family level also you remember i helped you huh you're looking for more help oh yeah Worcester islamic center yeah, yeah, yeah. i actually gave thousand dollars to Worcester islamic center do you need more money <laughs> why are you telling people and then there is one more tafsir of way of looking at this the other kind of tafsir is that you will give thousand five thousand dollar to a cause and then you will expect that now your opinion becomes five thousand dollar expensive so people should value your opinion because you mashallah you will claim ownership now you're given thousand dollar now mashallah you are withdrawing your reward early. You won't get any 401k benefits. If you withdraw your 401k early, there will be such, such a penalty. So many taxes will come. Wait for that time. Wait for the time. Don't, don't do the early withdrawal. And in fact, you won't only just cancel your reward. In the day of judgment, this will be source of punishment. Because in Sahih Muslim, Rasulullah says, ثَلَاثَ لَا يُكَلِّمُهُمُ اللَّهِ وَلَا يَنظُرْ إِلَيْهِمْ وَلَا يُزَكِّهِمْ there are three kinds of people. Allah won't even look look at them. They wanted attention in the community. Allah is not giving attention in the day of judgment. Allah won't even talk to them. Allah won't even clean them. One of those person is Al Mannan, the person who gives wealth and then he reminds people. You remember I helped you? You remember I gave you this money? Allah says you will get the strongest punishment in the day of judgment in these words. May Allah protect all of us and purify our intention. Amin Ya Rab. Last but not the least, so I mentioned about the reward, I mentioned about the prerequisites, the, the last thing is about the quality of the product we are giving. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyul ladhina amanu, anfiqu min tayyibati ma kasabtum mimma akhrajna lakum min al-ard, wa la tayammamu al-khabisa minhu tunfiquna wa lastum bi akhidihi illa an tughmidu fi. Allah says, when you are donating, when you are giving charity, do not give the worthless thing in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Give good things. Do not give the worthless thing for donation, which you yourself would not accept. And if someone will give you that worthless thing, you will only accept with the closed eyes. Ah, oh, okay, give me. Subhanallah, I have to say this, and it's not personal. Sometimes we treat masajid like a trash can. Oh, I have to throw this in garbage, might as well give to the masjid. That attitude we have is the value of house of Allah the same as trash? Really? There is one more way of looking at it. Not only in terms of wealth, in terms of the things you are putting in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it should be of good quality. Our general attitude globally, I spoke to the mashaykh in Pakistan and Saudi and some in Egypt, and I'm telling you, this is global disease we Muslims have right now. Whatever you want to put in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether money or kids, it have to be worthless thing. So if you have two, three kids, one is genius, you will make him a doctor. The other one is intelligent, you will make him a liar, sorry, lawyer. Right? <laughs> same thing, right? No, not same thing. <laughs> and then third kid is struggling to pass high school. He's a high school dropout. You say, okay, I have an option. I'll send him to Medina or al or Darul Ulum. At least he can become Imam of the Masjid, right? And then that Imam who cannot even pass high school, his intellect, his IQ level is lower than the room temperature. He will come and he will speak to all the doctors and engineers and businessmen. And then you will see and say, why this Imam is not talking about the intellectual things? Wait a minute. Before criticizing the Imam, did you put the best product in the market? Ask yourself. Ask yourself. So whether kids, whether financial, whether family, whether numbers, don't give those small amount and expect a big change. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us wisdom. Ameen ya Rabbi. Allah mansur al-Islam al-Muslimin. Allah maqzul man khazal al-Deena Muhammadin sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa la taj'alna ma'ahum. Allahumma la taj'alana thamban illa ghafarta. ولا هم إلا فرجت ولا دين إلا قضيت ولا حاجة من حوائج الدنيا والآخرة إلا قضيتها يا أرحم الراحمين ولا مريضا إلا شفيت ولا ميتا إلا رحمت ولا الضال إلا هديت يا أرحم الراحمين